Sharon Kaur, great to have you back at Noise11.com. And uh, also uh, great to be able to announce uh, that you will be back in Australia. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, finally come back out and this is, it's going to be so much fun. We're really looking forward to the show. So we're playing um, the Hope Estate, Hunter Valley on the 26th of November this year. Um, and, you know, we have such an amazing relationship with Australia. I think, you know, there's no better place to start off again, you know, with the course. So it's going to be a great show. We have um, Wet Wet Wet, a special guest, Ben Lee, your own artist, um, and another artist called Gaudian. So it's, it's going to be like a really super good musical night and really positive, you know. So I'm looking forward to that. And fun fact about our uh, our mate Ben Lee, he is the son-in-law of Donovan Leach. Oh, really? Oh, mm. there you go. You'll you'll have to do the "We're not worthy, we're not worthy" when he walks in the room. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then I'll ask him to do it back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, was it 2017 the last time the cause played? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, we played the Albert Hall in 2017. We had released our last solo album, um, uh, Jupiter Calling, uh, 2017, 2000, yeah, 2017. Um, so we were sort of, uh, yeah, we did a big gig for that show. It's a beautiful night. I just wish we'd done more, but it was it was a beautiful night, yeah. On that night, were you even contemplating that that was going to be the last time until you would be performing together as the cause for five years? No, not at all. I mean, you know, these things just sort of tend to happen. Um, uh, I suppose timing is everything, you know, especially when you've got a number of people involved with different lives trying to make decisions and pull things together. Um, so it just... I suppose it wasn't the right time to do more, but it wasn't something that I, you know, imagined when we were preparing for the show, you know, that this was going to be like a one show, but, you know, it was a great one show um, and certainly an amazing setting. The Albert Hall absolutely adore playing there. It's, you know, got a lot of history for us, you know? Um, so yeah. And so now we're back out and we're going to do this beautiful show. Yeah. Yeah. And that last album was uh, Jupiter Calling. Uh, without an Australian tour, it was still an Australian hit, which was uh, fantastic to see for you. I mean, uh, the actual uh, f- loyalty of, of Australian fans uh, must be incredible for you to see, even when you haven't been down here for a while, to actually look them in the eye. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, pretty incredible. I think that... You know, the Australians, you know, when we hit, they sort of brought us in like family, you know, and I, we just felt at the heart of everything and that obviously our music was bringing up good emotions um, and, you know, bringing joy to people um, and sort of freedom and fun, which is very often, you know, it's really, really necessary, you know, to have something super uplifting in your life. And it's also something that has you know, deep undercurrents of, you know, Celtic heritage. And the Australians really responded to that sort of mix that we that we had. I mean, our, you know, we first, you know, hit Australia. I mean, it wasn't anywhere else in the world. It was Australia. And it kind of went boom, you know. Um, and I would have to say, you know, very big thanks to the record company for, you know, working it, you know what I mean? And then going, come on down and, and then, you know, from our points of view, it was like, we're going, you know, because a lot of, you know, bands go, oh, it's too far away. I'm like, and I'm like, oh, no, it's not. I can't wait to see Australia. I can't wait to, you know, explore it. I want to be on the other side of the world, you know, and the switching seasons and all that sort of thing. So um, we, we kept going back and going back and going back and going back. And we just became sort of, you know, part of the the heart of Australia. So I, I love how people accepted us. I think it was, um, you know, non-judgmental and, and just really, really, really nice, you know? Yes, and, and as you say, you kept coming back, but never to that place that I first saw you, the pub in St Kilda. 
<laughs> the elephant of the wheelbarrow on Fitzroy Street. You got a bit bigger after that. We got, yeah, I suppose, you know, to kind of squeeze all the, you know, many thousands of fans into that pub was going to prove a little bit difficult, you know. Um, and that was such a great thing, you know. I mean, we we started everything from scratch. We played everything. We played back gardens. We played pubs. We played dirty clubs. I mean, that's how real bands do it. You start from the ground up. Um, and then, you know, and then you see it take off. And you know why? Because you put the work in. You know, you've really put the work in. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then, you know, we got bigger and bigger. I do remember... Uh, first experience of sort of recognition, I suppose you would call it fame, I'm not crazy about that word, but, you know, fame for a good reason, you know, the fact that people have, you know, responded to something that you're doing that's good. I remember us being on like, you know, one of those you know, cable cars and cairns going up into the rainforest. Um, you know, the four of us were sitting in the cable cars and just our, you know, normal clothes. And every time we go by a stop, we'd see people sort of looking in and, and having a reaction. And I was like, do I have ice cream on my face? I mean, is there, is there something wrong? I mean, you know, are we, do we look super odd or we look like aliens? I was really checking for ice cream on my face. Um, and then we, you know, the doors opened and, and, and somebody sort of went, oh my God, it's the course. I was like, well, wow, they know who we are, you know? So that was like, it was just super thrilling. And then I remember, you know, leaving the hotel and Kearns and going into the local boutiques and every shop was playing the album Forgiven Not Forgotten. Absolutely every shop. So I would go in, going in trying to find a bikini and then I realised everybody recognised me and then I get so embarrassed I'd have to leave, you know. So, yeah, it's very special times in Australia. We had a lot of fun in Australia. Oh, I have the same problem every time I go to buy a bikini. Yeah, you do. I know. I know. So, yeah, it's a quite a, it's a, if you're a shy person, it's tough going. <laughs> so since 2010, not only have you been Sharon Core from The Cause, you've been Sharon Core with your solo records. Um, now, now that we're back into the 2020s, uh, will the solo work merge its way into a Cause show? I don't know about that. I mean, we tend to keep our solo stuff um, separate. Um, I mean, I'm still promoting my 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 last record, the the Fool and the Scorpion, and I've just come off a gig in Menorca, so I've been touring that. And I was touring with uh, um, Jeff Beck, Johnny Depp, in um, all over the UK. Um, so we sort of we do we do tend to we don't we never really mix mix both. Um, I think that when we go to write again, that then you feel the influences of all the different separate influences that we have coming together. Um, but no, I would, you know, stick to my own touring and my own, you know, uh, uh, path for my solo career. And then the course thing is another beautiful thing and I'm very grateful to have both, you know. I like, I like the way you just flipped off that tour then. Yeah, I was touring with Jeff Beck and Johnny Depp. You know, like, like, like it's what we all do every day. Yeah, I, it is bizarre. I, that's for sure. Um, I remember seeing it sort of advertised and uh, uh, Johnny like was, wasn't actually supposed to be on it really. And then he turned up, uh, it was on the original bill and then he came off with this whole, the whole court thing in LA um, or whatever that was. But um, I saw the original bill and you see, I have, a, I, have a, I have a relationship, you know, musically with Jeff because he recorded on my first solo record. Um, he recorded on a beautiful track called Minona, Minona Heron, which means Woman of Ireland, uh, which is a very ancient Irish uh, Celtic piece. Um, and he just did an immense job. I mean, it was just a beautiful dance between violin, orchestra, and then, you know, this sort of incredible guitar playing from, from Jeff. So we could sort of, we did concerts together after that, and I would join him on his gigantic concerts with Eric Clapton and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I saw these come up and I just got on to my promoter and I went, I'd like to be in that tour. Can you get it for me? And he said, I'll certainly try. So, and he did. And I got the tour and, and you know, it was wonderful. We did beautiful venues. We did the Albert Hall. We did the Barbican. 
you know, really special venues, yeah, with a lot of history and great music all over the UK. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun, great music, um, and just super to listen to, you know, Jeff Beck play. I mean, it's like dying and going to heaven. I mean, it's just, you know, he's, I don't know, when he puts his hands to the guitar, there's something very otherworldly going on there, you know? Mm. Well, you also work with um, an Australian, well, Australian slash Irishman Damien Leith on uh, his record, Black as the Colour. How did that come about? Gosh, mm, that was a while back. I think, I think I may have met Damien, possibly, um, if my memory serves me well. It often doesn't since COVID, but... Um, uh, I think I may have met Damien when I was down touring with Ronan, Ronan Keating. Um, um, he got on, he's a nice guy, you know what I mean? There's no sort of pretense. He's a good dude and, you know, he's a good family man. And then, you know, we sort of talked about working together and then, you know, he, um, I don't know, we, we stayed in contact and then, then he, you know, asked me to, you know, sing and play. Um, uh, on Black as the Colour. So, I mean, I loved doing that. I loved, you know, somebody else's perspective on a really old Irish song is really beautiful when they're from the other side of the world. And then I sort of was able to put in more twists in, on my own influences within that song. So Damien was real sweet to work with. You know, he was just hanging out and doing his job, which is great, you know? Mm. There haven't been that many covers over the years. Uh, one that uh, is is rather surprising and sort of out of character for the cause is Little Wing, the uh, the Jimi Hendrix song. Um, how did yeah. how did that one uh, you know get chosen as the cover of choice for the cause? Interesting. I mean, we have an awful lot more influences than people would realise from just listening to Breathless. You know. So that's a sort of very defining, maybe narrow category in music. But I mean, we grew up listening to, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix, listening to Genesis, The Police, The Carpenters, and that's a very clear influence in our music. Joni Mitchell, I mean, you know, there was just so many great artists, you know, at the time, you know, Tears for Fears, you know, I, I, I can't even begin to remember the amount of people we were influenced by. Um, the Eagles as well. So, I mean, sort of our buffet of influence is much wider than you would presume from listening to, let's say, one of the sweeter songs that we've written. But you can really hear those influences on Jupiter Calling, you know, and you can also hear them on, on White Light. Um, so Little Wing, we were, um, we were doing, I think, an MTV Unplugged. Um, and then we were looking at, you know, covers to do I don't know who suggested Little Wing I, I really don't know oh I do I know how it came about we actually recorded Little Wing with the Chieftains years before uh, I think in 1999 um, and it sort of obviously was on our minds and it came back up and we thought you know let's do another version of that and then we had Ronnie Wood come and play it with us on the on the live on Club, which was just superb, you know. Um, but what a song! I mean, it's the atmosphere is just incredible, beautifully written. Mm. Another another throwaway line, and we had Ronnie Wood come in. So matter of fact, Sharon. I know, I know, but it's just it's kind of what happens in this industry, you know. And I, you know, at 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 the end of the day, it's it's very much musicians getting together and if the chemistry is good then you get together if the chemistry is not good you don't so it's just like people meeting all the time they either get on or they don't you know and I find that most of the really really truly talented heartfelt musicians in the world are genuinely you know pretty humble people and uh just you know focused on on what they want to do and you know getting on with people in their scenarios is not really, um, I don't encounter gigantic egos with people who are truly good at what they do, you know. Mm. Do you ever go back and revisit the Commitments movie? No, 
No. <laughs> was, because I say that because that was such a big movie in Australia at the time. It was gigantic all over the world. I mean, the thing about that movie was when we first, it was when we first got together as a band and we actually auditioned for the movie as a band. So it was the first time we played together as a band. So really, rather than it being about the movie, it was the catalyst for our career. It was like the thing that gelled us together. And then we went, well, we need to start writing. And we did. Um, and then it was a you know couple of year process of writing, Forgiven Not Forgotten, and working out who we were as writers and working out what's our take, what do we have that's different. And definitely the Irish influence was was the was the thing that sort of identified us clearly free of other bands at the time. So and that was, you know. Uh, a work of love. It was laborious, you know, um, or laborious, but uh, I, we put a lot of work into that. So, you know, Commitments was a catalyst for that. When I've seen it, which was like, I don't know, it feels like a million years ago. I mean, I hardly, I don't recognize myself. I mean, I was just like, you know, puppy fat and, and, and you know, just sort of straight out of the little town Dundalk and kind of like a little bit of a frightened rabbit, you know. So, um, yeah, those are, those are delicate times when you're that young, I think, you know. Yeah, but it, it had so many people that we saw for the first time. We saw you for the first time. We saw uh, Glenn Hansard for the first time. We saw Andrew Strong for the first time in that movie. Absolutely. I mean, well, it was focused on music, you know, and Alan Parker had a great knack for, um, you know, just sort of tapping into the musical environment of Ireland um uh so yeah a lot of great art artists sort of got brought to the forefront in that in that time and and so it should be because otherwise it would you know be kind of hard to get heard you know on a worldwide scale but for a worldwide movie you know okay so we are seeing you down here in november um i don't know whether we're even allowed to sort of suggest or maybe even you know, rumour that 2023 there may be some more shows in Australia? There could be. They're not set yet, but, I mean, we're, there's, we're certainly talking about it. So, I, you know, be honest about that, of course. And we have this show on the 26th of November, um, uh, you know, so we'll hope the state, Hunter Valley. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be like a 90-minute set. Uh, we'll do the songs that, you know, uh, I suppose our biggest hits and, and you know the stuff that people really responded to in Australia, we fairly amount to fair, fair amount of Irish music as well that we normally do. So um, I'm going to Ireland uh, to rehearse um, early November. So that's going to be fun seeing what emerges. It, it, it absolutely will be. There are a lot of hits to hear. Uh, I, I know most of the hits of been in the cause set list uh, in recent years. But what about Irresistible? I don't think you've played Irresistible for over 20 years. No, I, yeah, it's a, it's a curious one. It's, a, you know, when you're doing, I'm just turning off my air con because it's uh, actually managed to get cold here in Madrid for five minutes. Um, but uh, yeah, Irresistible, I don't know, when we're doing our set lists, set lists are, they have an arc. Um, and you need to sort of follow that arc. They sort of flow like a river, you know. Um, so sometimes when you when you try to put in songs, they just sort of they stick out and they don't they don't they don't fit. You know, Irresistible's a it's a great song um, in the genre of Breathless, you know, written with Mutt Lang. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll attempt it. But I mean, we've got like so many albums to choose from. It's a uh, it's a great problem to have. But, you know, I'm really interested in doing, like, Runaway because there's a really deep feeling in that song, especially in Australia, and, you know, Forgiven Not Forgotten, you know, and Radio and, and, you know, all those songs from then. I mean, they're the ones that really sort of penetrated. You know, they're the ones that really, you know, hit people, you know, as something different and beautiful. So I'm looking forward to playing those again. And we look forward to hearing them, but I, I, I will point out that it, uh, Irresistible, it, on my calculations, is 21 years since you've played it live. 
So, okay, so you, yeah, want, so you want us to play it. Are you putting it? <laughs> yes, is this? Little... It's an adult now, Sharon. It's an adult. Okay. All right. We'll have a look at it for you. <laughs> look forward to seeing you back in Australia. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. I can't wait to be there. And, and as always, a pleasure to have you at Noise 11. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, honey. That's lovely. Thank you. Take care.